Hey guys, Ben here, 3dgladiator.com. If you are watching this clip, you probably just came from the second part of the 3D cloth modeling tutorial on 3dgladiator.com. If not, click the link in the description to get a better understanding what this is all about. So in this short tutorial, I will show you how the script works and how to set up the scene. I will also show you what the script exactly does in the background and how you can recreate the same results by manually applying different modifiers to the model. So let me start by importing the three meshes we need for this procedure. And I start with the uh, simulated jacket and in this importing uh, dialog box make sure that the normals are set to from smoothing groups and click on import. And I repeat the exact same process for um, the flat version of our jacket. So basically what we have here are mm, two versions of the same mesh. Uh, the flat version represents the jacket in a pre-simulated stage and corresponds to the patterns I've drawn in the 2D window of Marvelous Designer. And last but not least, the third mesh is still missing. It's the retopologized version of these flat patterns here. And that's the mesh I have uh, previously created in ZBrush with the help of C Remesher. All right, so the main goal here is to morph the retopologized mesh into the shape of its uh, simulated counterpart. And of course, this is not possible by uh, simply applying a morph modifier to the new mesh, as the simulated one doesn't have the same polygon count or vertex position. So if I zoom in close here, you can see that it is pretty dense and consists of a lot of triangles. What I can do though is I can bind the retopologized mesh to the original flat one and morph the flat one into the shape of the um, simulated jacket. So that sounds uh, complicated, but it makes uh, much more sense in a second. And uh, therefore uh, I jump right into it and demonstrate what the script does. So I start with step one here and select the retopologized mesh and uh, click on split to object. And what this does is it um, basically detaches every element of the object and turns it into a new separate object. It also deletes uh, all assigned materials. It uh, randomly assigns an object color and it also centers the pivot point. So I'm going to repeat this for the two remaining meshes in the scene. And depending on the complexity and the mesh density, it takes a few seconds to calculate. Let's do this for the simulated jacket too, split to object. So it detaches mm, the elements of the jacket into new objects. Perfect. Next, uh, let's continue with step two. I pick the uh, sleeve here first, so th the simulated uh, sleeve then the corresponding pattern and the retopologized pattern. And I also make sure that this project UVs is checked and I hit calculate. And after a few seconds, I end up with the retopologized mesh morphed into the simulated sleeve exported from Marvelous Designer. So let me repeat these steps again by selecting this front pattern here and clicking on the corresponding uh, flat pattern and the retopologized pattern and hit calculate. And let's do one more. Select the top one, pick the flat pattern, pick the retopologized mesh, calculate. So if I keep doing this um, for all elements in the scene, I eventually end up with something like this. And this serves as a foundation for my base mesh. And all I have to do now is uh, to collapse the stack here, enter the edge mode and add a few edge loops here and there. So I can connect mm, the patterns and uh, weld the vertices and create uh, a nice and uh, close base mesh. 
So the whole process looks fancy, but in fact, um, there is nothing fancy or special about it. So uh, I would like to show you in the next step how to recreate the same outcome by manually applying modifiers. Let me close the script first. And I also delete the jacket and re-import the mesh so we can start with a clean version. I then turn the editable mesh into an editable poly, just right click on it and select convert to editable poly. And then I go to scripting, new script, and here I type in um, dollar sign dot material equal undefined, execute the script and delete the assigned material. Next, I detach some elements. I go into the element mode here, select the sleeve and click on detach, detach it as an object. And I do this for two more patterns, detach as object, and again, detach as an object. Let's delete um, the rest of the jacket here and assign different object colors to these newly created objects here. And then I select the sleeve, move it over to the left. And as this is just for demonstration purpose only, I select these two patterns and delete them. And we will continue with the sleeve only. I'm going to delete these uh, patterns too. And the first thing I need to do is to align uh, the retopologized mesh with the original flat one. So I select uh, the retopologized mesh and center align it with uh, the other flat mesh and make sure that the X position, X, Y and C position are checked. And for the current object and target object, center is checked too. Then I zoom in and show you what the UVs of these of the original flat one looks like. So I add an unwrap UVW modifier to the stack, open uh, the editor, and as you can see, uh, um, UVs are available here. So I collapse the stack again and select the um, retopologized mesh, add a UVW unwrap modifier, open the editor, and as you can see here, the UVs are missing. So what I can do here, just to give you an example, and this is what the uh, UV projection uh, checkbox uh, of the script does. It transfers the UVs from the original flat to the retopologized mesh. So I click on the flat uh, pattern and I add a projection modifier to the stack and pick the retopologized mesh as a reference uh, object. and um, add a project mapping and scroll down and click on project all. Wait a second, collapse the stack again, select the retopologized mesh and as you can see um, there is a projection holder in the stack. I collapse the stack and add a unwrap UBW modifier again, open the editor and as you can see the UVs have been transferred from the original flat one to the retopologized mesh. Then we need to bind the retopologized mesh to the original mesh so it follows when we morph the original flat one. And that can be done by applying a skin wrap modifier. And I choose the original flat one as a reference geometry. And here it is also very important that you set the fallout value to the lowest value possible. So that will be 0 0.001. And now the mesh gets handled as a rigid object and follows the underlying geometry as good as it can. Finally, I add a morpho modifier to the uh, original flat one. Right click on the first empty slot here, select pick from scene and choose the simulated sleeve as a reference object. Uh, let me zoom out here a little bit. And when I move the value from 0 to 100, you can see that it takes the shape of the simulated sleeve. And the cool thing here is that it also takes along the retopologized mesh. So when I center um, align everything and uh, zoom back in, 
um, you will notice that we have the exact same outcome as if we would have uh, used the script except of course that the script uh, does all these steps a lot faster so I undo everything here and um, move the flat patterns apart and run the script one more time I go on the scripting run script mine is located in the startup folder open up gladiator tools um, select the uh, simulated sleeve the original flat pattern the retopologized pattern check the project uvs calculate and after a few seconds i end up with the exact same results as we had before uh, when we manually applied all the modifiers to the meshes i can now turn the mesh into an editable poly and I just right click on the stack here, select collapse all and then I enter the vertex modes and zoom in close, right click and select target weld and start welding the vertices along the edge together. Uh, when I'm uh, done with it, I can check if I've missed any vertices by applying an STL check modifier. Um, unfortunately, they have messed that one up in the current version of 3ds Max as it uh, does no longer displays the critical areas in red anymore. I now have to apply an additional edit mesh or edit poly modifier and enter um, the face mode. So the selected faces highlight spots where the mesh is still open. So this is the case here along the top and the uh, bottom uh, edge, of course, but also along the border where I did not complete the vertex welding before. I use this trick all the time to check my mesh for holes before I export it as an OBJ. I can now collapse the stack again and enter the vertex mode and continue welding the word is this along the edge here. So if you keep doing this, you will eventually end up with a finished base mesh where all the patterns are connected. And the last thing I'm going to do here is adding uh, an STL check modifier. Click here the checkbox and apply um, edit mesh, enter the face mode. And as you can see, only the open edges or open borders are highlighted in red and everything else looks very nice and clean. I can export the mesh now as an OBJ, bring it to ZBrush together with the original simulated mesh from Marbulous Designer, combine both in a subtool. Um, subdivide the base mesh and reproject the details step by step. So that concludes this tutorial. If you want to try the script yourself, um, click the link in the description and go to the tutorial page on 3dgladiator.com, subscribe and I will send you an email with a download link. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.